For centuries, Bible prophecy has baffled the minds of men. Mistranslations and traditions have shrouded the original writings, causing men to disbelieve the authenticity of the inspired Holy Scriptures. Israel Hawkins, pastor and overseer of the House of Yahweh, uncovers the Bible prophecies for these last days. With over 50 years of biblical study and research, this prolific author and spokesman reveals why the destruction of mankind is coming and points to the law and the prophets to show how this destruction can be averted. Due to the demand for accuracy, the Book of Yahweh, the Holy Scriptures, will be used in this program. And now, the prophetic word. Well, greetings, everyone. Once again, this is Israel Hawkins coming to you from the House of Yahweh in Abilene, Texas. And this is the Prophetic Word Show. In the last broadcast, we were speaking of prophecies, of what they're showing in today's world. It's, it's magnificent how the prophecies uh, is showing us everything that is taking place among the nations today. In the last broadcast, we got up to Isaiah 66, which shows what the world is following in these last days and showing why the troubles that we're facing in today's world. There's a reason for these problems that we're facing. Write this down. Get a pencil and paper and write down these scriptures because they tell it all. The Catholic Church can no longer deceive the world. They, they deceived the world for years and years. And, and now... And they hid the Bible uh, after the, the uh, bluebonic plague uh, came uh, and, and wiped out so many of the priests. They lost their power. And of course, at that time, the Bible was printed and got out to the people. And, but that was in the 1600s. You know, 1600s was when the King James Version came out and the, and the people that put the, those translations out, uh, they were very much hated by the Catholic Church. But anyway, they, they removed the names from the, the name Yahweh from the Bible. They changed the names of the prophets that were named after Yahweh. They, named, they changed the name of Yahshua, the Savior, his name was Yahshua, meaning Yahweh will save his people from their sins. They, they took the name of two gods. I can send you all of this history. If you just write down the address, call, write, or email, and we'll get it to you showing these facts in history. It's even in the catechisms of the Catholic Church. They admit it, that they, took, they removed the names of, uh, of Yahweh and Yahshua, and they replaced the name of the Savior, Yahshua, with two gods from Egypt, uh, 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 from which you get the name Jesus and Christ. Those are not the Savior's names. Uh, December the 25th is not the Savior's birthday. <laughs> no, it's a, it's the birthday of a pagan god, the sun god, Baal, which means Lord. Uh, where do we get the word Lord? Well, it, uh, if you got an Unger's Bible Dictionary, or if you'll go to the library and get you an Unger's Bible Dictionary, or we'll send you a copy of it, uh, it will show you that the word Lord comes from the word Rabbi. So this, uh, uh, these are rabbis. When they died, they deified them. That is, they worshiped them as gods. Of course, the rabbi was dead. He knows nothing. The scripture says the dead know nothing, know not anything. The living know that they will die, but the dead know not anything. Well, who are they worshiping? Uh, 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 Revelations, the ninth chapter, uh, shows that they're worshiping demons, uh, uh, which are called gods, of course. Uh, I'll turn that, I'll read that to you in just a moment. It talks about the terrible wars, the nuclear wars that we're fixing to go into here. And this is in the, in the ninth chapter. Uh, chapter six shows the quartet for this day, this time period. 
Chapter 7 shows that Yahweh held back the wars in chapter 7 until a certain number was, uh, was uh, uh, reached with the message of Yahweh in these last days. And verse uh, 20 says, The rest of the men who were not killed by these plagues still would not repent of the works of their hands, that they should not worship demons. Well, the, the, the lords, the dead rabbis that they're worshiping uh, is not uh, th those that know nothing. They know not anything. But demons, demons inspire and sometimes uh, uh, do things to where the people think that they got a prayer answered. <laughs> well, of course they didn't. The, uh, uh, the, the, but these demons... They take the place of these men sometimes, and, and they are out to deceive. Well, here in, in uh, Isaiah, we see that the people here, they follow, in Isaiah 65, they follow a system. And they follow a religious leader, a pope, or popes, and their teaching is to eat swine's flesh and celebrate Halloween. Does that ring a bell for anyone? Uh, write this down and read it for yourself. It's Isaiah 65. And Isaiah is one of the prophets, you know, in, in, in uh, Acts, the seventh chapter, verse 52, Yahweh says uh, he, one of the apostles wrote under inspiration of Yahweh, saying, which of the prophets have your fathers not persecuted? Well, of course, they persecuted Isaiah for telling them that this worshiping the dead, you know, is a, is a sin uh, and, and brought through ignorance. But they, had, they worship the dead, keeping memorials. In verse 4, who assemble and spend nights keeping memorials to the dead. This started with a, a saint's day, a dead saint, and then... They said, well, let's make that a national holiday. Well, uh, another saint died that they thought a lot of and they wanted to make him a god. So they said, let's make this a national holiday. Well, this went on for several years and the Pope's dying and the dead rabbis dying. Uh, the, de the dead rabbis, you know, they made them saints too. It was a practice that came from Israel, I mean, from, from Egypt, because the Coptic Catholics uh, in, in, in Egypt, they worship the dead also, and they call them gods. Uh, Yahweh was not a god. <laughs> Yahweh never identified himself as a god. How did he identify himself? Simply Yahweh, he who can create from nothing. He who can create from nothing, that's Yahweh. And, and, of course, Yahshua, which means, that's the Savior's name, which means Yahweh will save his people from their sins. But Yahweh, the Savior, said, how do you, how do you address him? Our Father, which is in heaven, whose name is Yahweh, hallowed be thy name, he said. Holy is your name. Well, why did they mo remove it from the scriptures and replace it with the titles of rabbis. Unger's Bible Dictionary plainly says the word Lord is not a divine title and should have never been used to replace the Creator's name. Well, of course, meaning that's what they used. They used the word Lord. If you look up the word rabbi in Unger's Bible Dictionary, you'll find it's the title of dead rabbis. The, the highest ranking was called Lord, and, uh, um, and my Lord, or the Lord. The highest ranking rabbi, when he died, he then was deified, and you referred to him as the Lord, hoping you would get a prayer answered. I'll show you how to get prayers answered here in just a few minutes. But notice in verse 4, Isaiah 65 in verse 4, they assemble and spend nights keeping memorials to the dead who eat swine's flesh. Swine's flesh is forbidden. It's an unclean animal that Yahweh says, don't touch it. Don't touch its dead carcass. 
and don't eat it. Uh, and, and, and of course, uh, he shows that you will be, you'll make yourself abominable uh, uh, with the, by eating this, which means you'll make yourself sick. Sickness will enter your body in the form of microorganism parasites that comes from pork, such as trichna. Yes, to the pork, uh, uh, all pork has trichna. And of course, it can get into your bloodstream, get into your brain. And then uh, we have uh, brain tumors, we have brain cancers, uh, things like this. Uh, and then we wonder where those came from. Why did I get a cancer in my brain? Why did I get a tumor in my brain? So he says, who keep memorials for the dead, who eat swine's flesh, and the broth of abominable things are in their vessels. That is, their blood vessels. This is the religion, the Catholic religion today. Who say, stand by yourself, do not come near me, for I am holier than you. These are a smoke in my nostrils and a fire that burns all day. Your iniquities and the iniquities of your fathers. Yes, iniquities. That means doing away with Yahweh's law. That's what it means. Now we read that in last broadcast and we got up to Isaiah 66 and verse 17 speaking of nuclear war that is going to consume very soon now in this generation. Yes, we're in the last generation as prophecy shows. Prophecy shows that in this generation, knowledge would be increased and mankind would take that knowledge and he would create weapons of mass destruction that could darken the sun and the moon, yes? And the Savior said, when you see these things, when you see these things, know that that generation will not pass away. Let's turn and read that, and then we'll come back to Isaiah 66. Uh, Matthew 24, if you have a King James Version, if you have a book of Yahweh, a book of Yahweh is the best translation, I think, on the market. It's, uh, it's the closest thing there is, and we've had many scholars tell us this, that the book of Yahweh is the closest thing there is, closest translation there is to the original Hebrew. Well, in, in Matithia 24, that was, uh, that's the name of this apostle, and they changed it. They took the name Yah off of the end of it and made his name, changed it to Matthew in order to remove the name Yahweh from the Holy Scripture. Now, all the prophets that was named after Yahweh, they had their name changed, and all the apostles also. In Matthew 24, verse 29, he shows weapons of mass destruction that can actually darken the sun. Darken the sun. And he says in verse 21 and 22, there will be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of, 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 the, of creation until now. And no, will ever, not will ever be again. Such tribulation that if Yahweh did not finally step in and stop it, no flesh, no life would be saved on the face of the earth. That's how bad it's getting right now. Russia and the United States have enough powerful bombs right now to destroy life on earth 10 times over. Yes, and we have 11 nations that have nuclear bombs. We have plans right now, well-made plans to carry out a depopulation program. A depopulation program, yes. They want to depopulate the earth. They say that, that uh, uh, Henry, Henry Kissinger said that we must depopulate the earth by the year so and so. Bill Clinton repeated his words, saying we must depot, uh, depopulate the earth by so many billion people by a certain time period. Yes, that's in their plans. Malachi Martin, 
He was a writer for the Catholic Church, the late Malachi Martin, who wrote the book, The Keys of This Blood. He's showing that the Catholic Church is the aeronautic priesthood that they call Jews, the aeronautic priesthood, and of course, it is the aeronautic priesthood, uh, but not the, not the one that followed Aaron or Moshe. But it's a priesthood that was established there at that time, and of course, uh, they rebelled against Yahweh and went their own way in Samuel, the eighth chapter. That's the Catholic Church. They rebelled against Yahweh's righteousness. If you'll read 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel 8, the, about the first nine verses, you'll see that they rebelled against Yahweh. These were the tribes of Israel. And they came down to, through the centuries, to us today, and they destroyed the temple in 70 CE, moved the artifacts to Rome, had their Roman general, Titus, move the artifacts to Rome. Yes, everything was moved out of the temple. All the wealth was moved out of that temple and taken to Rome in 70 CE. You want proof of that? We have proof. You want proof of the name change? I have proof. Gobs of proof. Tons of proof. Mountains of proof. Call, write, or email, and let me send it to you. You can look it up for yourself. It'll take you a while. But if you would look up, if you'd go to the library, if you don't have an Unger's Bible Dictionary, and look up the word Lord, it will tell you the word Lord is not a divine title and should have never been used to replace the Creator's name, meaning they use the word Lord to replace the Creator's name. If you'll look up the name Yahweh, you will see that his name, this name is the name of the creator. And he was known by that name and none of the gods were ever known by the name Yahweh. None of them. They were adversaries. The gods are adversaries to Yahweh. The Catholic Church, that's what Catholic means. It means universal. Universal means they worship all gods. Yes, that came from Egypt. Egypt worships all gods. When Moshe said, when they asked, who is this God that has sent you to free the Israelites? And he said, the one that sent us is, his name is Yahweh. He, they could not find the word Yahweh in any of the books of the religions in Egypt because Yahweh was not a god. Yahweh is the creator, the heavenly father, who created mankind for the purpose of giving mankind, making him in the image and likeness of Yahweh, then giving mankind authority. Well, of course, mankind rebelled against Yahweh, as we see, after they were brought out of the land of Egypt, given the laws of Yahweh, then the 12 tribes rebelled against Samuel, who was the prophet of Yahweh, Samuel. And in 1 Samuel 8, we see that they turned against Yahweh. Let me read it to you. Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and approached Samuel when he was at Ramah, saying to him, You are old, you're old, and your sons do not walk in, the way, in your ways. Appoint for us a king to judge us, just like all other nations. But these things displeased Samuel, when they said, give us a king to judge us, instead of Samuel judging them, they wanted a king, uh, a, a king, not a priest of Yahweh, but a king, a regular king to judge them. Then Samuel prayed to Yahweh, and Yahweh answered Samuel and said, 
Listen to all the words the people speak to you, for they have not rejected you, they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them, just as they have done to me from the day I brought them out of Egypt. These were the 12 tribes that Yahweh brought out of Egypt to this very day. They are now doing to you, they are forsaking me in order to serve gods. In order to serve gods. If you'll go back to Genesis, Genesis. Now Yahweh says in Genesis 1.26, Yahweh said, I will make man in my image according to my likeness, and they will have authority. Then he, Yahweh, creates the tree in verse chapter 2 and verse 9. He plants a garden, and he puts in that garden the tree of life. That's eternal life. The tree of life. And in, in, uh, write down Matithia or Matthew, the seventh chapter, and notice what the Savior says about this tree of life and the tree of righteousness of righteousness and evil. Yahweh commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but the tree of knowledge of righteousness and evil you must not eat, for in the day that you eat thereof, dying you will die. Sin does this to the body. When you partake of sin, you may think you get away with it, but you don't. Microorganisms enter your body by acts of sin, fornication, adultery, bestiality, sodomy. All of those are sexual acts of sin that let parasites enter your body and brain. Yes, they go to every, they can go to every organ in your body, and then in a few years, you'll start coming down first with aches and pains, and then you'll find out you have tumors and cancers even in the brain. Dying, you will die. In the day you start to eat of it, the day you partake of sin, you will start dying and you will die. And that is a fact. The wages of sin is death, Romans 6, 23. Do you not know, Romans, let me, let me turn to that and read it for you. So you will understand the apostle speaking here in, in Romans is trying to tell you that dying, you will die and you belong to Satan if you practice sin. You don't belong to Yahweh. In uh, Romans 6, 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of Yahweh is eternal life. The gift of the tree of life. The tree of life. That brings eternal life. And the, how do you get it? If you go over to the very last chapter in your Bible, Revelations. Revelations, the last chapter, verse chapter 22 of Revelations. Write that, write that down and read it for yourself. Verse 12 says, Behold, I come quickly. This is the Savior doing the speaking as is shown in verse 16. I, Yahshua, have sent my Moloch to testify. He's doing the speaking here. This, these prophecies, this book of Revelations was given to Yahshua Messiah. You find that in the very first chapter, verse, first verse of Revelation. He says, Behold, I come quickly, this is the Savior, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work will be. I am the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who keep his laws or King James Version said, Blessed are those who keep his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life. Do you get that? And may enter in through the gates into the city. You're only blessed if you keep blessed with eternal life. If you keep the laws of Yahweh. Keep the commandments. He says it again. He says it even plainer than that. In Matitia or Matthew 19, he was asked, What do I do that I may receive eternal life? And the Savior said, If you will enter into life, keep the commandments. 
keep the commandments. Well, of course, the Catholic Church, they made it a death penalty to be, get caught keeping the commandments of Yahweh. And this went on, the Crusades went on for, for hundreds of years and millions and millions of people died. Even in early America, they tried to wipe out what they called the Indians, the Indians who worshiped Yahweh, who were keeping the Sabbath, who they found keeping the Sabbath day, or calling on the name of Yahweh. They even had songs to Yahweh called Hey, Yah, Yah, Ho, Yah, Yah. That word Yah, it stands for Yahweh. It's a short for Yahweh. And they wiped out millions of the early Americans who would not follow the Catholic Church. They wiped out millions in Ukraine. We're seeing their, their blood sucking come again now. And the people, the people that are keeping the seventh day Sabbath in Ukraine, they're getting really worried now because the persecution is coming. They're burning their synagogues. Yes, they're, they're cut off from Yahweh. These people, even though they're keeping the Sabbath, they're cut off from Yahweh right now. I could show everyone in Ukraine who's keeping the Sabbath how to get in touch with Yahweh. You can't just do it by keeping the Sabbath. Isaiah 59 shows you what to do. Isaiah 58 and 59 shows you what to do and how to get your prayers answered. Until next broadcast, may Yahweh bless your understanding. For more information, write The House of Yahweh. Yahweh is spelled Y-A-H-W-E-H. -E Post Office Box 2498. Abilene, Texas 79604. That's The House of Yahweh. Post Office Box 2498. Abilene, Texas 79604. Or call one 800 613-9494. That's 1-800-613-9494. And don't forget to ask for our free monthly magazine, The Prophetic Word.